Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Robert Kiyosaki's first book, If You Want to Be Rich and Happy, Don't Go to School, Ensuring Lifetime Security for Yourself and Your Children. And so if you don't know who Robert Kiyosaki is, he's the a very, very, very famous author of the purple quote, purple book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which inspired a lot of people to become entrepreneurs and real estate investors. And he became famous when he was first introduced in the Oprah show in the early 90s. Now, for a lot of people, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is, is their favorite book of Robert's because it's you know the one he's most famous for. My favorite book is actually this one. This is his very first book. It's not as well known. Unfortunately, you can only get a paperback copy of it. And um, there's no way to get like an online PDF version. And I wish there was because I have a physical copy, but I do want to share some uh, things from the book. And I'll probably do it in another video when I'm able to um, uh, grab some quotes from the book after I do a little bit more review and study. But the reason that I never really liked like Rich Dad Poor Dad is because I didn't identify with it. I had no desire to be an entrepreneur, business owner, save taxes, be rich. I never cared about that. In fact, the only reason I ever started to learn about that is because I was flat broke and the people that I thought would help me never really helped me. It, it, so because I was such in a bad position, that's the, the part where I started to learn about entrepreneurship and making money and being a business owner. Because it seems like in the society we live in, you you either sink or, or swim. Like there's no in between. Like if you have a little bit of trouble swimming, nobody throws you like a life raft or a life, you know, one of those vests that help you swim. Uh, maybe 20 to 50 years ago, we used to have that for people. But it just seems like in today's society, we don't have that anymore. And that's why um, that's when I started to become interested in like entrepreneurship, real estate, making money. Uh, so I never really um, identified with that that type of book. But one of the things that I did start to get into after I graduated high school is just, you know, learning about what are the, the problems of society that I'm facing that I feel like can be fixed or I don't understand why I have to go through all this nonsense and one of the things that I've always uh, – I had a big resentment of was being forced to go to school for the majority of my youth, right? There were a lot of things and dreams that I had in my youth that I begged and pleaded with other people that I want to, like, share and, and, and experience with them, and it, and they never really cared about that. It's like, just go to school, get good grades, and it's like, okay, like – and the funny thing is I actually did do that, and I think one of the things that, that I – um experiences I had in life is that I had a lot of people tell me that I'm not good enough because I'm not, let's say like getting good grades or trying to go to a good college. And what happened was I don't think they expected me to go from like a average B minus C plus type of student to all straight A's within one year. And that that's what I did. And unfortunately I still was not accepted by the people who were supposed to lead me who were who in my uh, formative years, instead, all they do is just raise the bar, right? So they'll say things like, oh, well, you know, you have to be more into other cultures and, you know, travel, blah, 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 blah. I'm the only person I know who um, speaks fluent Spanish and isn't Latino and wasn't like born and raised in a Latino country, uh, culture. And so again, every time you achieve, so, so what happens is that um, we live in this dysfunctional society where people try to pressure you or make you feel like you're not good enough for some X, Y, Z reason that they think is attainable for you. And so when you actually re reach that goal, they just ignore it and then try to, uh, what do you call, raise the goalposts. And I think because I never really felt accepted um, where I was growing up and the fact that I didn't feel like I had a tribe, at least I thought I had a tribe, um, but when that illusion quickly disappeared, um, I think I ultimately became depressed and, and just kind of didn't want to wake up the next day. You know what I mean? It's just like, what's the point? Like, people are going to tell me that I'm not good enough for X, Y, Z reason. I reached that goal. Instead of telling me that they care about me at any point in my life, it's just another reason that, to tell me that they don't care about me, right? And that's kind of like my big dissatisfaction with the school system is that 
it's kind of a perpetual cycle uh, with students in that system. And even the teachers, if you've ever been a teacher, I think they have it much worse than the students. The teachers are the victims of the system as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if you ever read like a teacher blog or a teacher like YouTube video, it, the, the things that they talk about are pretty insane. And I did, I know this because I did teaching for like six months. Uh, fortunately, I didn't need a license. And, and so I was able to escape that, that whatever you call it, prison or whatever. But again, it's just a perpetual cycle to tell people that they're, they're not good enough. And that's how I, I don't know how, but I was just doing internet searches back in the early 2000s. And I came across this book. Um, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. And, um, you know, for the purposes of this video, I'm just introducing the book and we'll maybe go into a deeper study next time to kind of review the things that I found insightful about it. But I was much more invested in learning about, um, you know, let's say problems with the school system. And I think Robert might have had that same experience, too, because his father was like the superintendent of education uh, in Hawaii. And, um, you know, like I think just being so close to the educational system being bored, um, you know, and having, let's say, like your your curiosity or dreams squashed. Um, I just, I, I kind of had the same uh, relatability or I, I related to, to that feeling. And that's why I really like this book because this book spoke to me and what I, the problems I was trying to solve more than Rich Dad Poor Dad. Rich Dad Poor Dad is about being an entrepreneur and being rich. And I never had that, really had that desire until I felt like every single person at a certain point in my adult life that that um, I wanted to depend on or, or hoping that, you know, in, in my weak moments, they would take care of me and vice versa. Right. But they all kind of abandoned me uh, when I needed them. And that's the only reason I, I even cared about making money entrepreneurship. Why, why did I learn about velocity banking? Because I was so broke. I, I was going to learn anything to to get out of it. Even you know, at the time, owning a home seemed out of my out of my reach, right? Like it seemed out of my reach. But then you know, if you look at my other videos, I paid off a mortgage in um twenty five percent of a mortgage in a year. I was like, who does that, right? So um, there there is a part of me where yes, I am a little grateful that I went through the things that I do, but I felt like it was totally unnecessary because my so-called tribe should have taught me what I needed to know in my formative years. And that tribe didn't care to teach its members how to survive. Right. So, so that's why I'm, <clears throat> you know, as the official quote leader of this group, the stance of this group is that school's a waste of time. And, you know, if you talk to a lot of Korean people, a lot of, you know, the, the mainstream Korean society in general, uh, South Korean society is all about that rat race, right? And, you know, if I've seen some like uh, videos or interviews of North Koreans and their school cultures, you know, when, when it's 3 p.m., you just go home and, and you're good and you play around with other kids. Whereas that South Korean culture is like, you're in that school rat race for your entire life and then you go to college, kind of do nothing. Hopefully you'll make good connections if you go to the top three universities, even though that's kind of disappearing uh nowadays right and then you just kind of uh either become a bureaucrat or a corporate drone for for uh the big mega corporations that rule the society kind of like japan it's very similar to japan like when i read about how similar like south korean and japanese society was it kind of depressed me because maybe just as a korean person i kind of want to believe that we we're a little bit different from our quote oppressors but it's very depressing to see like how similar those societies are. But um, yeah, so back to my point, I just want to introduce you to this book. Uh, amazing book. And then uh, I'll make other videos to do a deeper dive uh, study of what I like the book. And again, the, the official stance of this group is that we value education. We just don't value all the negative things that, that school does to, to kids, students, even the adult teachers, oh my goodness, I feel sorry for them, what they go through. Um, and so the system doesn't, is not a positive for anybody. I, I honestly don't know who actually benefits from, from the school system this day and age anymore. But yeah, so that's what it is. All right, so this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship. If you're interested in joining our group, 
uh, go ahead and click the Google Form link below, or you can uh, email us uh, by finding out our email address in the About page of the YouTube channel. All right, have a great day, everybody, and we will speak next time.